Well, as athletes of the spirit, our conditioning keeps the enemy off our back. They don't want to wrestle with us. They don't want to compete with us because they're going to get their head slammed. But you may be able to stand against the wiles, the methodology. You know, wiles in the Greek is method, methodia, methodia. Obviously, methods comes from that, methods of the devil, diabolos, and he's got methods. Ever noticed? He cometh not before to steal and to kill and to destroy. But spiritually, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Well, it doesn't mean we don't wrestle. It means we wrestle against something else. If it's not flesh and blood, there's another taponosis in the negative. It puts the positive truth. We wrestle against principalities the dignity of position of these spirit powers against powers, Zeusia, their privilege to exercise their dark majesties, their dark bewitchings, against the rulers of the darkness of this cosmos. That's one great Greek word, kosmokratoros, which I unveiled to our ministry years ago in Athletes of the Spirit. Cosmo means the ordered universe. Kratoros is our word, kratos, impact power. This is the ordered darkness of impact of this world, which tells you the spirit realm cannot violate the natural laws of the second heaven and earth. A lot of the magical so-called realism that is portrayed in books and film and even spiritualizing explanations is not possible if it violates God's natural laws. But there is much that they can do within the natural laws. Years ago, Dr. Wirbel spent many sessions explaining to us how devil spirits can bring things into manifestation because they understand the molecular structure of the physical universe. As most of us have been taught, if they still teach it in these doggone schools, everything is made up of electrons, neurons, and protons. Oh, and one more, morons. Uh -huh. But anyway, electrons, neurons, and protons, these molecular structures are all full of gaps. Even though something like this table looks solid, it's uh, in essence in its most in its quantum smallest units there are multiple gaps even even microscopes can show us that to a point so that these gaps can be manipulated by devil spirits and he spent hours showing us that how can a devil spirit possess a physical body because the spirits know the gaps in the molecular structure of our body and soul and if a person's believing and or genetics allows such weakness of penetration, these spirits can inhabit and control. The knowledge of the Word and the power of God in that Holy Spirit energized keeps them out, keeps them out of the interstices of our body and soul. He showed us how physical manifestations can be done. Sometimes the devils do this. They don't do it all the time because then people would wake up and get too suspicious of them. But time after time, they can change even the physical appearance better, better than any plastic surgeon. They can steal. He had examples that he had from his life and ministry. They can steal money right out of bank accounts and put it in another person's account physically. And then the one stolen from goes to jail for embezzlement. He had a literal case. He had documented on that. The banker, out of whose accounts he was responsible, money was stolen, was convicted and went to prison, embezzling. And he had on first-hand authority that the exact amount of cash stolen out of the bank showed up in a seance a thousand miles away on a table in front of a medium stealing the money right out of that account so they could utilize it in their spiritualist endeavors. He told us the example, and he taught us how through the manipulation of the spacings of the molecular structures of the physical universe, the devil's the god of this world. 
He knows more than any physicist alive. He knows more than 1,500 Stephen Hawking's about the physical nature of the universe or anybody else you think is a smarty pants. All these guys that act like they know all this stuff. They do know a lot, but to look at it spiritually. He taught us how could ectoplasmic form be produced in a seance out of the mucous membranes in the human body. The human body has so many mucous membranes. All through it, I'm not just talking about, you know, the stuff that comes out your nose. Mucous membranes to keep the fluidity and flexibility of our joints, our muscles, all through the body. There is enough mucous membranes in our body where if a devil spirit's allowed to dip in and grab it, it could bring a full manifestation of another person right into the room. And when the unbelief and the, and the spiritualist belief of people is so strong, it can be done. He, Dr. Werwell himself, touched ectoplasm. He saw out of mediums' bodies. It comes out of their noses, comes out of their eyes, comes out of their ears. See, he can't violate physical law. He's got to bring it out of the orifices that are there. Full physical manifestations of their dead grandpa assuring them that they're alive in heaven and having a great time and hurry up and come and see him. He literally touched that ectoplasm. He said it was cold and slimy, and from that he later learned from one of the physicians in the ministry from West Virginia. I still remember him standing up in my first advanced class. Dr. Earl said, Dr. Spencer, is there enough mucus in the human body where ectoplasmic forms could be produced in a seance. And he stood up there, and this man was a genius in the, in the physical body, and talked for a couple of minutes about how that's absolutely true, way more than necessary to produce a full human form in visual form. And some of you, maybe if you grew up in spiritualism, could document this. We documented a lot of this years ago with our WACOR. I remember one young lady, her family was deeply into spiritualism. Dad, mom, brothers, sisters, everybody. She got where she could send sparks out of her fingers and burn places on the wall. I'm not talking about horror movie fake stuff. I'm talking literally she could, the devil spirits were letting her spark out of her fingers and burn holes in her bedroom wall. She also said that time after time, a huge red devil face would appear floating in the air in her room. And it essentially terrified her, but she literally said it was physically there. She could reach out and touch it. Later on, when she got into the Word and took Dr. Wirrell's advanced class, and he taught about ectoplasmic form and the mucus of the human body, this is all in Cosmo Cretoros here, I'm not just telling you horror stories. I'm illustrating this phrase in Ephesians 6.12. She realized that that, uh, that devil head, which was physically... Now, sometimes the enemy can hallucinate in, the, in their minds. That's a devil spirit, a hallucination spirit. And in my experience, most of the time, that's how he does it to people. They hallucinate whole scenarios and... and and then they try to blame you that somehow you were literally there doing those things. It's a full bore, 5D, 5HD, technicolor hallucination in their mind. And they'd swear till they were dead that it literally happened, but it's nothing but a damned hallucination devil that they have allowed to function convincing them of something that you never had anything to do with. Man, oh man. But let's get back to ectoplasm. I want to finish the story. She realized and shared with us in one of our advanced classes, the only time that physical head appeared in her room was when her dog was with her in her bedroom. There you go. The spirit manipulated the mucous membranes in that dog, and that's how that head would appear. Whenever she had the dog sleep out back or somewhere else, it never happened. How do you like that, Bible fans? <laughs>